The chart on an Agile board lets you monitor the progress for the projects that are managed on the board. On a Scrum board, you work on a dedicated set of tasks for each sprint. To track this type of effort, use the burndown chart. You can measure progress for all of the cards on the board or filter the list of issues. Here, we filter out individual tasks and show the burndown for each of the user stories that are assigned to the current sprint. You can calculate the burndown based on the metrics that you use to track the completion of each task. This can either represent the number of cards that are on the board or the value that is used to estimate each task. Here, we estimate tasks in ideal days. If you use time tracking in your projects, you can calculate the burndown based on the amount of spent time that has been added to each issue as a work item. This data is used to calculate the ideal burndown. This line represents the average amount of effort that must be performed to resolve all of the issues by the end of the sprint. Non-working days are excluded from the calculation, which results in a flat line where no progress is expected. The remaining effort represents your actual progress towards this goal. As the sprint progresses, the amount of remaining effort should diminish, or burn down. At each point in time, you can compare these values to see if your team is running behind or ahead of schedule. With time tracking enabled, you can also see the total amount of spent time that has been logged as work items during the sprint. On a Kanban board, you're not concerned with burning down issues within a set time frame. You need a different chart. The cumulative flow diagram shows you how much work has been done, what's in progress, and how many issues are sitting in the backlog. This chart shows the total number of cards in each stage on your Kanban board as horizontal bands. The timeline tracks changes in each stage over the last two weeks. The band at the top of the chart shows how many cards on the board are in the backlog. The band at the bottom represents finished tasks. The most important bands to watch are in the middle of the chart. These represent stages of work in progress. What you're looking for here is a steady stream where the number of cards in each stage of development remains relatively constant. When one of these bands widens vertically, it means that the stage is overloaded. If you don't allocate more resources to this stage of development, you will experience delays. Another thing you want to look out for is a sudden increase in any band. This indicates that there is a bottleneck that prevents issues from moving from one stage to the next. That's a quick look at the charts you can use with an Agile board in Utrecht. Thanks for watching.